are ye bastards and not sons. So if you don't have any parents, what are you? They call you a bastard. So if you don't get disciplined by the Lord, that's a scary thing because he's not dealing with you anymore. So now when we see the things that we're going through, it's all praise to the Most High because, man, I know he's dealing with me because I'm one of his children. And when I go and read this book for myself outside of religion, I know why we're going through it. So now I can be at peace and I know how to maneuver going forward. Give me First John uh, 2 and 15. Y'all got any questions or anything? I know he stopped y'all, I, I, I just jumped in on that. The book of First John, chapter 2, verse 15. And yeah, this is the problem that we have right now with our people, man. Love not the world. Man, we love everything about this world. We love everything about Look, Kamala thought we loved the uh, music industry so much, she had made the stallion twerking to get our votes. Because we love that. Our people fought for that kind of stuff. But that's just pandering for our votes. I'm insulted at that. Because what is different about me and a Republican voter that you're going to give me an ass to watch and say to get my vote, but they ain't not doing that for their people. What, what, is, what does that say about us or how they look at us? Keep going. Neither the things that are in the world. Uh -huh. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. And that's the biggest thing we deal with. And it ain't just because I'm on this side, don't mean I don't deal with it either. There's a lot of beautiful women out here, but you got to have control over your, your lust. But we're not supposed to look at our women and be like, man, mm. we're not supposed to be thinking like that with our women. It's okay to have, I mean, she's beautiful, she's gorgeous. You know, we, we should be looking for wife tendencies in a woman. They, we should be representing ourselves as a husband to these women. So that way you can prove each other and really know what you're getting into and really know that person. Out here, this is all dress up. This is all dress up. Everybody can put on a show out here, but are these the real people you're really seeing? Or is this homecoming? Got a stunt. I just seen three Rolls Royces come through here today. I ain't mad, but dang. Everybody come out here to get seen. Right. Well, that's the lust of the flesh that we always chasing after and we shouldn't. Because that's our that that we can't allow that to control us more than our own obedience, our own discipline. In the lust of the eyes, right, in the pride of life. Then we get pride of life as if we matter so much compared to the Lord. Man, I can move how I want to do as if the Lord don't have power to put the wipers out right now. We gotta really look at how powerful that is. Right now, us not getting punished for the things that we know we did wrong. That's called grace. The Lord allowing you to have time to be like, you know what, man, I'm tripping. I can't cheat on my wife, man. I got I to gotta repent for that and never do it again. I can't steal from my brother. I can't be uh, jealous of everything you got at your house. We shouldn't be moving like that. Because what does that cause? Thieves, hatred, fights. Oh, it causes all those other things when we go after our lust and pride of life. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Right, because at the end of the day, we know our spirits are going to return to the Heavenly Father. So this little mist of life that we have right now, it's important that we that we be an example, but our life, this flesh, it's going it's all going to go away. We got to think about heaven, the kingdom, rulership. That's what's going to come back and get established. All the other nations are going to be looking at us as an example. Go back to that Deuteronomy 4. Uh, Deuteronomy 4 and uh, 6. Right the, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 6 keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding My bad. in the sight of the nation right so he said he's talking about keeping the commandments he said this is your wisdom and understanding this is how we gain knowledge you can get a thousand certificates and still be dumb out here in the real world that piece of paper don't mean nothing when it comes to the Lord he will grant you wisdom and understanding King Solomon knew how the elements worked on earth because he, all he prayed for was wisdom from the Lord and how to judge his people First righteously. The Lord gave him everything. Now nah, we ain't going there. Oh, I, I just referenced it. So appreciate it. In the sight of the nation, we shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Do other nations look at it like that now? Do they look at the black people and say, man, they are wise and understanding people, man? The Lord said that's how we're supposed to be, though. They're supposed to look at us like, dang, look how they moving. Man, I know that God is with them. Go ahead. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? The Lord, if we are obedient to the commandments, the Lord is going to be close to us. We're going to fight our battles for us. We're going to be able to walk through this life smooth if we have that great relationship with the Lord. Keep going. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Mm -hmm. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? which I set before you this day. Right, and it goes back to us keeping God's laws, us being obedient to the Lord. 
That's what all this is about. And it doesn't mean we can't have fun. We get together every month and, and have a feast for Thanksgiving for a new month. Excuse me. We got the Lord's feast days. We don't care about their Thanksgiving and their Christmases because we know we're going to come together for the Lord on our feast days. But we get so caught up in the pride of life and everything going on and keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, I got to get a Christmas tree. Oh, I got to I gotta bring the kids these presents. And people stressing and bugged out of their mind. But we do the things for the Lord. He can provide everything to us. Give me that in Matthew 6. Maybe start a light. Matthew chapter nah, 6 gonna... and verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right, because he was talking about, man, the birds, the Lord take care of them. The flowers in the field, they still bloom and are beautiful. But we worried about clothes and food. The Lord said, seek the kingdom first, and everything else is going to be given to us. We got to change our focus. Don't get me wrong. I used to, when I worked two or three jobs, man, the first thing I'm doing with that second job was buying clothes because I want to be the freshest and stand out and be, look at me, look at me. But I was stressing myself out by working two or three jobs just to keep up with the Joneses, being able to party every weekend and keep up with that lifestyle. That's really what stressful as hell at the end of the day. You know what I mean? And, that, and what did I get from all of them days? Got nothing from it. Got nothing from it. But we seek the things from the Lord, and then he'll start putting the pieces in place. I remember hearing the saying, because one thing we always be like, man, the Lord would just bless me with a hit the lottery or something like that. But sometimes, are we looking in the mirror saying, man, I can't even handle $5. Why the Lord going to give me 500 you know what I mean? We got to change the way we think and approach this world. Y'all are fine. Y'all have any questions, things? Y'all go to school here? Or y'all go to school here? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Right. Our whole duty is to fear the Lord and keep commandments. Because what that's going to do is going to help set the rest of our, our nation up. Because as men, we the leaders. In our households, in the communities, we're supposed to be setting the bar, setting the standard for our women and children. And the generation before us has failed. And a lot of things go into that, whether it be raised by single mothers, parents, and our father might be in jail, or the parents never got together. But all of that has trickled to the point now where we don't have the elders and people. There's not many elders that's in our communities looking out for the young people no more. That's why you got young people out here now trying to wake our people up. And it's important. Because now y'all in a beautiful position where y'all can get this at a young age and change the course of the rest of your life and change the course of the woman you're going to end up marrying and the children you're going to end up having. All of that could change. Are we going to be doing the same thing? Are we going to be another statistic? Are we going to be another broken household, another baby mama, baby daddy situation? we got to strive for better than that. Your ki kids visiting their parents every other weekend is normal now. But what does that do for the child? You know what I mean? we got to change the way we think as men. Um, give me first Kings 2 and 2. Y'all heard of King David, right? This, this is what King, when King David was about to die, this is the instruction he gave his son. The book of first Kings, chapter 2 and verse 2. I go the way of all the earth. Be, be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. He said, now, I'm about to leave this earth. Show yourself a man. And what do you tell him to do? And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. To walk in all his ways, to keep the Salakia, to keep his statutes and his commandments, and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Right. So whatever we want to do, we're going to prosper. Give me Joshua one and eight. Everything we do, we're going to prosper if we keep the commandments of the Lord. Now we don't read that like three different places. Seek God first. Seek His kingdom. He's going to take care of us. The duty of a man is to keep the commandments. Because we're going to set the order in our nation. And we haven't done that. We can see all the chaos now. All these beautiful women out here got to dress half naked for what? If that was my daughter, I'd be crushed to see her out here thinking that she has to present herself like that. And then they're going to tell us, I can't find a good man. Stop looking at me like a piece of meat. What else you want me to do? That's how you advertising yourself. you looking like, I'm just going to know you tonight. I don't know about tomorrow. But then they get mad when we approach them that way or deal with them that way. They got to want more out of themselves as well. The book, of, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and day and night, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt shall make thy way prosperous. Uh -huh. And then thou shalt have good success. So we keep the commandments of the Lord. We read it again. 
that's what's going to help us prosper. Pastor Joel Osteen is going to give you a motivational speech. He's not going to tell you nothing the Lord said, though, because he's a prosperity preacher. The Lord said you're going to prosper by keeping his commandments. That's what's going to help us get out of all of our situations. Even Dr. Savi said it. And Revelation said the earth is for the healing. Everything the Lord gave us is already in this book. King Solomon said his words is what uh, heals you. So we got to live this. Not just know it. Not just read it. We got to actually live it. Give me that in uh, James uh, 1 and 22, I believe. The book of James chapter 1 and verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving your own selves. Right. So when we start learning commandments, when we start learning thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, those, those are some of the ones we you know, grew up in church and all that. But it's more than that. Once we start learning them, we got to start applying them. It's cool to know it, but if you're not living it, it don't mean nothing. So he said, "Be don't just be hearers, but be doers. Uh, Revelation 1 and 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. So now we got to take the time to read what we're supposed to do so we can learn what's right and wrong, according to the Lord. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. He said to do these things too. Read this book and do them. Uh, give me Leviticus 11. I'm going to give y'all a couple things y'all might not have known. Y'all can stop me whenever you want, man. I'm going to keep going as long as y'all stay. <laughs> but this is something that our people don't, we get so caught up in, we don't even know this is one of God's laws. Uh, 11 and uh, 7. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. So this, like I said, this is bigger than religion. So like this tells us everything we need to know about life. Did you know he also gave us our dietary laws? He told us what food is good for us and what food is bad for us. One of those things he said, eat the fruit with the seed. So if your fruits and vegetables have seeds in them, those are good food for you to eat. You see what they're doing to the food now? Watermelons ain't got seeds in them no more. That don't make sense. That's because they're doing something outside of what the Lord said do. He said, eat the fruits and the vegetables with seeds. Now this is for the animals. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, and verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be clubbing footed. Do you know what the swine is? Pork, pig. So he gave us requirements. He said if they have a cloven foot and they digest their food, chew the cud in a certain way that's cleanly, that's clean, then you can eat that food. So he said the pig has got a cloven foot, but it doesn't digest his food properly. But yet he cheweth not the cud, uh -huh. he is unclean to you. So he said the swine is unclean to you. But of the flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. So if you see a dead pig, you're not even supposed to touch it. So the Lord said we're not supposed to eat swine. Now I'm not going to ask you if you do or you don't, but these are things that we got to learn from the Lord. We said don't eat swine, that means we got to stop eating it. And not eating it, it also helps us with our natural health every day. High blood pressure, gout, diabetes, all these things that we get into is because we're not following the dietary laws of the Lord. Uh, keep going. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of that are in the waters, whatsoever has fins and scales. So he said now whatever's in the water, it has fins and scales you can eat. In the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers. So fresh water or salt water. You like fresh water bass and salt water bass. Either way. Them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers. Of all that move in the waters. And all and of any living thing which is in the waters. They shall be an abomination unto you. So what's some food that our people love to eat? that don't have fins and scales out of the water. Yes. Say it again. I can't hear you. Not someone in the water. Skins, scales, uh, you're allowed to eat chicken. So in the water, it says it's got to have scales and fins. Catfish don't have scales. I didn't even know that. I used to love catfish too. But then you got crabs. They don't have skins and fins. Lobsters, clams, oysters, all of that stuff our people eat. But what are those animals used for? What are those animals used for? They clean the ocean. They filter the water. And we're eating. That's like eating your vacuum filter. Because it clean it. That goes through the filter so it don't go back into the air. We want to go eat the filter. The oysters, the clams, they filter and clean the water. You eating dirt when you eat in the inside. That's why they don't chew them. They just, they just swallow them down when you eat oysters. Because they don't want to chew the grit. If you know it's got it in there, you're still eating it. Same thing with the crabs and lobsters. A dead animal that goes to the bottom of the sea, that's what they cleaning up. They're going to wipe that out and eat it. It's a little bit more history. Back in the day when they knew they could harvest oysters out of Chesapeake Bay, they used to do it so bad that they had to make a law to stop harvesting them because it was getting the water so dirty. 
and they were over harvesting them where they couldn't even reproduce at a high rate. Cause we were eating that stuff like we weren't supposed to. Now every summer, I live in Virginia, Hampton Rose area. Every every time every one every summer, diseases in the water, different kind of sicknesses in the water. Stay out of the water because we eating the animals that clean the uh, folks. Right, and then not even knowing, lobsters used to be prisoner food, slave food. The only reason it got uh, marked up was because they learned how to keep it cold to get it further into the country. Because as soon as you kill a lobster, the bacteria and the diseases increase significantly. That's why you go to a lo uh, restaurant, you got a live lobster. Because it's healthier to eat it as soon as you kill it. Why is that? But we still take that chance. We don't put it up on the dish and think we get a delicacy. Red lobster, cheddar bay biscuits, and shrimp everywhere. <laughs> Seafood boils. Seafood boils. Their own worms still be alive and you know And they even tell you, don't go on YouTube and get yourself grossed out, but they'll cut the disease out of the animal and still give you the rest of it. Like, they don't, they not, all they worried about, this industry is worried about dollars, making money. That's all they worried about. We were talking about it on the way up here. The amount of food and stuff they put into our system and the things that's not good for us, all they care about is money. How long can we make this apple last? So we're gonna make a special apple and switch some stuff out. Y'all good? Did y'all have any questions? I know I didn't get through a whole lot of y'all, man. Did y'all get a jug of the fly? Say definitely, definitely. Definitely, man. No doubt, no doubt. Go back to the running fifteen real quick. They walk away. Fifteen and one. Well, uh, fifteen and two. You look familiar. That's why I asked what school you went to.